Chicago Bears Now is presented by Manscaped. Manscaped.com, promo code BEARS20 to get 20% off all of their men's grooming products, including the Beard Hedger. They finally have a beard trimming product, and I have never been happier. 20% off, promo code BEARS20. We'll tell you a little bit more about the Beard Hedger later on in the show. Speaking of today's show, topic of the show is Bears Cut Candidates. Eight players that could get cut this offseason. And I do want to make this designation as well. At the end of each player that we talk about, it, I will give my take on whether or not they should cut or keep him. I'm simply pointing out eight guys that could get cut for salary cap purposes, not necessarily guys I would for sure want to cut. Some of these guys I would cut. Some of these guys I would keep. I will announce at the end of each player which ones I would keep or cut. So name a player that you think the Bears got to get rid of. You must cut him. Sayonara. See you later. He's got to move on. Let me know who that player is. This will be the pen comment on today's show, so let me know who that is. All right, eight Bears cut candidates coming up here on Bears. Now, Cody White here, the offensive guard. I don't know if he was hurt. I don't know if he's just washed. I don't know if... He just had a couple good years, and this is more of who he is. But Cody Whitehair just was not very good last year. Frankly, he wasn't very good the year before. Um, I think he's a guy that is a prime cut candidate. You look at the numbers here. If you cut him pre-June 1st. Now, remember, most guys are pre-June 1st cuts. There's very rarely post-June 1st cut designations. It does happen. It does happen, but uh, you have to wait until June 2nd to actually get that $9.9 million that white hair uh, would clear. Uh, if you cut them pre-June 1st, yeah, you take on over $8 million in dead cap for next year. You save 5.8, though, which is a decent number. You can sign a starter with that money. Uh, but if he is a post-June 1, uh, $4.2 million in dead cap, uh, you would save almost $10 million. So maybe he's a candidate that could be a post-June 1 designation. Uh, my overall take, I would cut Cody White here. Um, I know he was voted a team captain. I know he's a leader, but the play just doesn't match. Uh, he, he's just not good anymore. I mean, Tevin Jenkins, a much better player. Quite frankly, this might be a hot take. I think Michael Schofield, at worst, was comparable. And you could, you could re-sign Schofield for the vet minimum and play him at left guard. Uh, or you can keep Whitehair, who makes you know over $10 million. So... It's nothing personal. It's just he makes too much money for the production. It's been multiple years of below average play if it was just one bad year. Like last year, we were thinking, ah, bad year. The naggy thing fell apart. Come back. He wasn't good this year. He just wasn't. So I would cut Cody White here. I would cut my losses, and I would move on. Next up is Al Quadeen Muhammad, one of Ryan Pohl's defensive free agent signings last year. I think he signed like a two year, $10 million deal, something like that. Um, here are the numbers. Uh, he's in the final year of his deal, so pre-post June 1st, same amount. Uh, dead cap, only half a million bucks, uh, and you save almost $4 million if you do cut him. And let's be honest, you look at the numbers that he gave you, uh, 29 tackles, one sack, one forced fumble. Uh, this is pretty easy. I'm cutting al Muhammad. Mohamed. Uh, he was arguably the most disappointing free agent you signed because he had – I think, what, six sacks with the Colts with Matt Eberflus and Indy? He knew the system. There was no reason for him to not at least be a three- or four-sack guy. And I get, you know, he was playing next to a guy like DeForest Buckner in Indy, but he was a total non-factor pretty much all season. Uh, I would cut him. I would move on. Say $4 million bucks. That's That seems like a no-brainer to me. Next up is Justin Jones, the defensive tackle, another guy who signed a two-year deal. I think he was around two-year 12, $13 million, something like that. Um second year of his contract coming up if he does stay on board. Uh, if you cut him, you, uh, dead cap is $2.5 million, uh, but you would save almost $5 million, $4.9 million. You look at Justin's numbers, 52 tackles, three sacks, four breakups at the line of scrimmage, 12 tackles for loss. I think I would actually keep Justin Jones. I like Justin Jones. I think if he's your second or third defensive tackle, he's pretty damn solid. I actually thought he played with a good spirit. He got elevated to team captain uh, after Quinn and Roquan got traded. Uh, he's a clear rah-rah guy. Um, you know, I, I think he's a good player. If you end up putting a guy like Deron Payne or Jalen Carter next to him and he's the other guy or – Hell, you add two defensive tackles and he's a heavy rotation third DT. Uh, I think that's valuable. I would keep Justin Jones. Uh, is he maybe a tick overpaid? Maybe, but he's decently productive, though. I thought he was the one defensive lineman you had that was fairly consistent throughout the season. So he's a guy that I would keep around. Shout out to Manscaped and the beer 
Hedger kit because uh, the Beard Hedger is just an awesome product. It's uh, got to keep your beard looking nice and smooth on an annual basis, on a daily basis. Are you tired of using multiple products to maintain your beard? Well, the Beard Header Pro Kit uh, comes with all the products that you need from Manscaped. This completes uh, the Beard Maintenance Kit. has everything you need for the modern man on the go, from trimming to treatment. This kit has it all. This includes the Beard Hedger, AC adapter, USB-C cable, beard shampoo, uh, and beard conditioner as well, beard oil, beard balm, and a travel bag. Plus, as a special bonus, you'll also receive a free beard accessory pack with a beard brush, beard comb, and beard scissors. The Beard Hedger was designed with a unique cutting angle to have its built-in comb, lift flat-lying hairs for smooth, single-stroke trimming, and for a limited time, you can get 20% off and free shipping when you go to manscaped.com. Use Pro Bears 20. I think the coolest part about the Beard uh, hedger is, you know how when you normally get a beard trimming product, if you don't, usually it comes with a bunch of guards that have that you attach to it and it has different length of how far you want to trim. This thing, it has one and you just rotate it. One to 20. If you want to trim it down to a two, if you want to trim it down to a six, if you want to trim it down to a 12, you just rotate it to that and you are good to go. It saves a lot of room. I've had to have extra travel kits in the past to hold all those guards. Uh, not with this product. Manscaped.com, promo code BEARS20. Had a nice trim recently. It's starting to grow back, come in nicely. Uh, I really love the Beard Hedger from Manscaped. And hey, look, I, you know, I'm not someone who likes to brag. My, I, like, I think my beard game's pretty strong. If I'm signing off from this product, trust me, you are not going to regret getting it. Manscaped.com, promo code BEARS20. Another defensive lineman here. Getting a trend here. you got to get better in the trenches. Uh, Travis Gibson. Travis Gibson, who is an interesting case study here. Uh, we'll talk about the numbers first, and then I'll kind of give my analysis uh, in terms of if I would keep or cut him. Uh, dead cap, hardly anything, less than $100,000. Uh, and then savings, $2.75 million, which isn't a huge number, but it's not nothing either. You could argue you could find someone uh, for uh, that price tag that gave you more than what he did this year. Now, he wasn't a total disaster. He had three sacks, 11 QB hits. That's decent. He had seven sacks last year, guys, and this year he was a starter. Last year he was like a part-time starter. Uh, I, one of my bold predictions was he would have double-digit sacks, and I was way off on that, uh, I will freely admit. That being said, I think I would keep him. It's less than $3 million to keep him. Um, full offseason to learn this system a little bit more. He's got a lot of snaps under his belt now. I just don't think he's a starter. I think he's a rotation guy. If he's your third edge rusher, I think that's pretty good. But if he's the guy you're expecting to have the most production off the edge, you're in trouble. And that and that's clearly what took place this year. I would keep him, though, because we've seen the flashes. 2021 was pretty impressive. Now, maybe it's a scheme issue. Maybe he's better in a 3-4. Who knows? Uh, but uh, I would opt to keep him. But you just got to add a couple guys and have him slide down a bit. Same with really Dominic Robinson, too, last year. If he's a rotation piece, I like him. Starter, he's not ready for that role. Let's go to Lucas Patrick now as we are on our fifth Bears cut candidate. Look, Lucas Patrick was, you know, a guy that – Eberflus and Poles really sold us on. He was, you know, uh, and he didn't give us much, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, so if you cut him, dead cap, one and a half million, you save almost four. Um, that's that's pretty appealing, guys. Lucas Patrick played two series the entire season at center. Otherwise, he was playing guard when he had that hand injury to start the year. Blow average at guard. I thought the two drives he played center were fine, but no way of knowing if he could be a sustainable starter there for a 17-game season and hold up at a high level, I would cut Lucas Patrick. Uh, I, I've made that pretty clear, and this might be the hottest takes of all. I would cut Patrick and bring back Mustafa on vet minimum as your backup, backup, and then go draft or sign a center. Because if you're keeping Patrick, he better be your starter. That's kind of how I view it. Otherwise, I, I think Saving the $4 million is the way to go. So I would cut him. I think you can upgrade at center. I don't think he showed enough at guard to try and make him your left guard. I guess you could cut white hair and plug him in at left guard, but I would rather upgrade there as well. So I think I'm cutting Lucas Patrick, uh, but that is just what I think. What do you guys think on this question? Who is the bigger 2022 disappointment? Because both these guys were supposed to be key contributors, and neither really were. Type LB for Lucas Patrick, AQM for Alkany Muhammad. Um, they were both pretty disappointing. Now, Patrick in his defense did get hurt, multiple injuries, but uh, let me know, LP or AQM? Three more to go here. Kendall Vildor, the cornerback, who's entering the final year of his rookie deal. 
This one's a tricky one. This is probably the one I went most back and forth on. Uh, dead cap of less than 80000 so if you cut them, it's, there's almost no penalty. Uh, you save $2.7 million uh, if you uh, do cut him. Vildor, early in the year, played pretty well. Now, he only ended up playing in 11 games, but he had five breakups and a pick. But the last four or five games he played in, he wasn't very good, to be honest with you. He kind of was your CB2 as Kyler Gordon played that nickel and Jalen Johnson was your CB1. But once he went down, we saw Jalen Jones, who's going to be back or at least competing for a roster spot. We saw Josh Blackwell, who's an exclusive rights free agent, which basically means he's going to be back unless the Bears just don't want him back. But it's going to cost you nothing to bring him back. I think I would cut Vildor. Uh, you know, he's had chances. And, you know, he did make some progress last year. But the last, you know, kind of month we saw him play, he, he, he kind of regressed again. Uh, I think Blackwell and Jones got enough playing time and showed some things that I would bring them back. Now, let me add this. I would go get a corner that can start. I think Johnson is your CB1. Gordon's either your CB2 or a nickel, whichever role you want him in. Then you need your third starter. I don't think Blackwell or Jones should be that unless they just go crazy and can't. But you should sign a vet or draft a corner in the middle rounds uh, to help replace Vildor. But I would cut Kendall Vildor. I think, uh, I think I've moved on from that experiment. Subscribe to Chicago Bears now if you want more videos like this. Plus, daily Bears news and rumors content. Live streams will go live every Tuesday throughout the offseason. When breaking news occurs, we'll go live for that as well. We'll continue to have you covered with everything here on this channel. It's YouTube.com slash Bears now. Subscribe today. And remember, once we get to 60,000 subscribers, we will do a fan-led mock draft live here on Bears now. So you won't want to miss that. Couple more here, and remember these cut candidates are guys they could cut to save money. I am announcing at the end of each player if I would cut or keep them, so don't freak out about Eddie Jackson here. Here are the numbers for Eddie Jackson, who was having a really good year before he suffered the leg injury. Uh, pre June 1st, uh, you would take on almost 10 million in dead cap. That's a lot, but you save 7.5 million, also a lot. Post June 1st, 3.9 million in dead cap not a ton, you save 13.1. So that's pretty significant. So this could be a case where if you do cut them, maybe it would be a post June 1st. You'd have to wait and see again. You wouldn't get that money till June 2nd. So, you know, that's kind of the, uh, the if or, um, you know, the double-edged sword there. Uh, Eddie Jackson played really well this year, though. Only played in 12 games, 80 tackles, six breakups, four picks, two forced fumbles. I mean, he really bought into the hits principles and uh, bounced back. I mean, we were, we've been looking for this BoJack for – couple of years. I mean, in 2020 and 2021, this was not the Eddie Jackson that we were used to. 2018 and 19, this is what we saw, and we saw it again in 2022, and he's still young. I would keep Eddie Jackson. Uh, I think a pre-June June 1st cut doesn't make sense. You know, almost $10 million in dead cap. That's too much. Uh, I'm keeping Jackson for another year because guess what? If you cut Eddie Jackson, then you got a whole nother problem. You got to get a, a, another free safety. So that just creates an extra hole. I don't want to create more holes. So uh, I'm keeping Eddie Jackson, assuming the medical stuff is fine. Uh, and by all accounts, uh, he should be good to go for next season. And then the last one, and uh, this is where it gets interesting. Cairo Santos, because Cairo Santos late in the year, kind of found himself in a funk. He missed a few extra points. He ended up having to move the ball back to the center of the field. Then he started making them again, so that was good. Um, here are the cap numbers, then we'll talk about some uh, other statistics and whatnot. 1.5 million in dead cap. Uh, you save 3 million if you cut him pre-June 1st. Post-June 1st, uh, 500,000 in dead cap, save 4 million. So what you could do in theory is hey, we're keeping you Cairo, but we're bringing in a kicker to compete with you on the 90-man roster. And if he gets beat out, well, then you save the $4 million and you have some extra money during the season to spend. That could be an option. But let's not just forget all of a sudden that Cairo Santos hasn't been really good with the Bears. Like, the extra point thing is a little weird, but still 93%, which isn't bad considering it's a 33-yard extra point now. He's been unbelievable on field goals, especially inside 50. He's basically automatic. He's only missed... What is it? Uh, he's only missed four field goals inside of 50. That's pretty impressive. 50-plus, uh, he's over 50%, and that's pretty good as well, not having the strongest leg. Uh, I would keep Cairo Santos. Again, you can say, oh, you're concerned, didn't like how the season ended. Okay, fine. Bring in a guy off the streets on your 90-man roster to compete with him. You have 37 extra roster spots in the offseason. I'm fine with that. But you cut Santos, then 
again, you have another problem. Like, you have to go get another kicker. So, uh, I don't know if he's necessarily a long-term guy. I don't love that he doesn't have the strongest leg, and that can be tough in windy Chicago. You need to be able to boom the ball, and he doesn't boom it. Uh, but I think for next year, uh, I would keep him, uh, unless he's just a disaster, you know, early in the year or something like that. But I would keep him. I don't think the money is too big of a factor to justify cutting him. Uh, don't create an extra problem. You already have way too many needs. What do you guys think, though? Do the Bears need a new kicker? If you think they do, type Y for yes. If you're like me and you're like, eh, no, I think he's fine, type N for no. Um, he's not a top five kicker, but he's probably top ten with how accurate he is. You know, I wish he had a little bit of a stronger leg, but, you know, it's better than what they had between Robbie Gold and him. Do I need to remind you of Cody Parkey? I don't think I do. Uh, y for yes, N for no. Do the Bears need a new kicker? Appreciate you guys for indulging as uh, those are some Bears cut candidates, some players they can move on from to save some money. Uh, again, I would keep some of the guys. I would cut some of the guys. Uh, so we will see what Ryan Poles decides to do. Last offseason, he was very active in uh, changing this roster. I would expect more of the same this year.